hello my big community i would like to thank you because today we are more than 1000 subscribers to this channel welcome to this core lecture this topic is going to be an introduction to sap cx or acp hybrids as an agenda we are going to discuss sap hybrids and its background the release guidance and the architecture from database to front end the spring framework and the role it plays in sap hybris and the configuration of the sap hybris suite as a background to hybris it was founded in 1997 in switzerland they moved to headquarters in munich where they reside today major private equity investment was made in 2011 and in august 2013 sap acquired the company this made Hybris part of one of the largest platforms worldwide. Rapidly assimilated into the SAP product line with support from most products, example ERPs, is for HANA. So what is Hybris? Hybris is a Java Spring Framework based closed source e-commerce solution for enterprise level customers. SAP Hybris is predominantly used as a full end-to-end e-commerce solution, but used as a product or content manager system is also possible. Likewise, Hybris has extensive data and order management capabilities that can be combined or used in a standalone fashion. The base architecture is the platform, which realizes functionality to the end user via modules and extensions that are presented to the end user by the front end. Don't worry if these terms don't seem familiar to you. We will be discussing them through the lecture. Before we take a deep dive, let's review the resources that are available to you, the student. The Udemy course forum and the runhybrids.com. The official hybrids wiki should be your first touch point of any question regarding ACP hybrids or this course. This is the official wiki that is available for partners and licensees as such. If you are an existing SAP hybrid, be sure to contact your license holder and gain access. There is also hybrid experts and informal hybrids on the message board, which is also available to wiki access users. Finally, Stack Overflow has limited but helpful posts on most topics. SAP hybrid follows a numbered release cadence. This number, for example, might be up to four digits long. SAP Hybris used to have a four digit release number example, 6.5.102. This number is broken down as six, this is the major release, and is roughly every two years. Five is a new feature, and is roughly every three months. One for minor feature features, and there is no API changes allowed between major releases. 2. Rear number and is for critical patches and is only issued as required. This naming convention has changed since August 2018. The first two digits refers to the year, the last two one to the month. For example, 1905 refers to May 2019. It's now time to take, to take a look at the SAP Hybris architecture from the data from the database at the front end. As you can see from this diagram, we are presenting the SAP hybrid stack. Don't worry if this diagram seems complicated. We are going to be discussing each element in turn. However, let's briefly review the diagram. At the very bottom, we have the database. Within half the application server, the SAP Hybris core platform, its extensions, the APIs, the accelerator, and the various front end. These front ends are present to the client or the back office user, and ultimately what the user uses to interact with SAP Hybris. The first element we are going to discuss is the DAP database. The database is not strictly Hybris component but it's instrumental in the operation of the suite. Data is persisted in the database like and likewise cache when appropriate in the SAP Hybris suite. 
Caching is very important to the SAP Hybrid Suite and as such will feature heavily in this course. We recommend when we are discussing caching that you take a few notes as it's very important to understand this concept. Hybris is largely database independent and can run on most major database offerings. There is no pre preferred database but MySQL, MS Secure, SAP HANA and Oracle are popular choices. Note there is concurrently little evidence to support high performance database, example SAP HANA as having significant performance gains in standard SAP hybrid installations. It's important to choose the database that is right for your organization and when you are completing your code base that you performed through performance testings. Lastly, it's important to the hybrid suite must always be used to read and write to the database as direct database access, for example, via custom code outside hybrid APIs can cause data inconsistencies. This is something that you and your developers should be keen, keenly aware of. The next element we are going to discuss is the application server. Hybris being Java based system runs with the Java virtual machine on a serverless container or a G2EE compliant application server example Apache Tomcat. Hybris comes pre-bundled with an optimized version of Apache Tomcat including relevant caching and persistence mechanisms. This is the best, let's say the, the best or recommended way to run Hybris. However, Hybris can also put bundles fit to place on your own servers. It's recommended here to proceed with caution as the optimized version included with Hybris is most certainly the best one to use. The next and arguably most important element is that of the platform. This is the core of SAP Hybris offering the services and functionality needed to run and operate the suite. The platform layer abstracts the various data and functionality streams into discrete units and exposes them to higher layer of the suite. An example of this is the persistence layer that handles database access and caching. It's important to take note of this. Core or platform code should never be altered. Instead, extensions and customization should be made in line with Hybris best practices example in the slash custom folder. Don't worry if this concept seems new. We are gonna, discuss, gonna be discussing this in the next section. The next element as discussed in the platform section is that, of, is that of extensions. These are bundles of functionality that are ready to use and leveraged by the developer in the SAP Hybris ecosystem. They can be used singularly but often have interdependence, being strongly leveraged in accelerator offerings. Allow for extensive customization and abstraction within the hybrid suite by using extensions the hybrid core code is not altered. This makes migration between hybrid versions much simpler. A further layer of abstraction from the SAP hybrid core code is that of APIs. So the APIs are subject to continuous update but some commonly used APIs are the service layer API, web service API and virtual GDBC API. The Hybris Web Service Framework is based on, a, on the RESTful architecture, thereby providing secure crude access to all models in the service layer over a widely adopted protocol. As an, as an example of use of the API is mobile app. This mobile app may consume JSON from Hybris and this will be presented to us via, via the, the RESTful architecture. The amalgamation of APIs and extensions comes together with accelerator accelerators. One of the best features of SAP Hybris and the significant selling point of the, future, the suite, these are out of the box, uses collection of extensions and functionality that create basic building blocks in a project. For example, B2C storefront. Using an accelerator, a company could develop a storefront in less than a day and provide no custom code was required. You could be deployed within a week, for example. This is a rare occurrence, but it just goes 
to show how quick accelerators can get a company up and running from zero to a full shop. As such, these fast development cycles and here and the best practice is really strong selling point of SAP hybrids. Their use is not mandatory and flexibility allows a project to pick and choose from examples shipped within the SAP hybrids. For example, you may have a B2C storefront but require B2B functionality. As a result, you can join B2C and B2B accelerator creating a solution that suits your organization perfectly. At the very top of the stack is the front end. This is the look and feel exposed to end users. Either be the storefront or the, or the cockpit, Spring MVC is the core technology in use here. But Hybrid allows for easy integration to all modern web designs frameworks, example Angular GS. In fact, SAP Hybrids can be abstracted to an entirely different framework and service. Only using web services to SAP Hybrids for content retrieval. An example here will once again come back to a RESTful mobile application. As discussed in the previous slides, Hybris uses the MVC or model view and control design paradigm of Spring to present the front end to the end user. The model manages data logic and rules applications. The view is the output representation of the information from the model, for example, displaying a grid of products the end user from the data returned and the controller, accepts input and converts the command for both the model and or the view to leverage. Okay, now that we have completed our journey through the SAP hybrid stack, let's once again take another view of this. In this particular diagram, we have the database which connects to the application, server which is running the core platform which ultimately exposes business logic via presentation to the end user in their given domain, for example, a B2B web shop. It's now apparent that the SAP hybrid suite makes strong use of a layer architecture. There are a number of layers that are quite important and we are going to discuss four of them here. The first layer is the presentation layer, which is composed of service component, Spring MVC, and the views. The end user ultimately, this is represented to the user as they would interact with it. For example, a product listing. The second layer is the service layer. And as an SAP hybrid developer, this is where you would be spending most of your time. This is the hybrid API which operates via plain old objects. In terms of how this would be represented to you, this would be Java class and code which makes extensive use of the hybrid APIs. The third layer and arguably the most important is that of the type layer that's composed of definitions of business objects known as types and their fields known as attributes made via the items.xml and associated XML files. How this will be represented to the end user is items and, associ and, and associated data XML representation. The type system within Hybris is an entire election itself and we'll be coming back to it later in the course. The last layer is that of the persistence layer, which creates an abstraction for the database for data persistency and caching. This layer is largely transparent, but should never be circumvented. For example, direct SQL access via Java code in terms of how this data is represented. It's SQL data, which is passed in a compliant manner to the, underly to the underlying suite database. So let's bring our stack together into SAP Hybrid Server. It's a pre-configured server based on Apache Tomcat. It's a production ready configuration streamlined for the SAP Hybrid Suite. It's customized at runtime based on templates for development and production deployments. This also includes debug mode. It's highly OS independent. 
easily transportable core base between installation and environments. It's configurable as a service on Windows and Linux. And ultimately, is safeguarded by an external wrapper to restart the Apache Tomcat Java Virtual Machine in the event of stop or bad events. The Java Spring Framework plays an important role in the SAP Hybrid Suite. This course is not development focused, but I believe it's important to understand the role of the Spring Framework the role the Spring Framework plays within SAP Hybris. So what is Spring Framework? The Spring Framework is an application framework and inversion of control container for Java platform. It's open source and widely supported being maintained by Spring Source. Hybris makes use of the majority of the Spring paradigms and effective development in Hybris is dependent on the understanding of the framework. If you choose to develop an SAP Hybris the following topics uh, are worthy of review first dependency injection. So Spring Framework is used heavily and provides better decoupling and improved stability. This is also known as the inversion of control. Second, aspect oriented programming is not used by default but usable for extending areas that are not customizable by default or when implementing cross-carrying concerns. Third, the Spring MVC, which we have mentioned before, is a request-based framework used in the accelerator, accelerators and in user display operations. Finally, the Spring Security, used for authentication and basic authorizations. The last element I wish to discuss in this in this lecture is how to configure the SAP Hybris. This is done through the file local.properties and this is the center of configuration of configuration for SAP Hybris. It's editable in any text editor and parameters are stored on each line with dot and equals notation. It's important to note that the parameters are read at startup only. Changes made during runtime will not be reflected but can be changed in HAC, Hybris Administration Console, temporarily. The file is located in the Hybris slash config folder and supersedes project.properties in the core files. Local properties is instrumental in configuring SAP Hybris. To recap this lecture, we had an introduction to SAP Hybris as a company and their history. We reviewed the SAP Hybris technology stack into SAP Hybris learned architecture. We reviewed the Spring Framework and, its and how it's important for SAP Hybris development. Finally, we reviewed the configuration of Hybris via local properties. Thank you for watching this lecture and we'll see you in next one. If you are not uh, subscribed yet to our channel, please do it. Click the bell. Thank you.